This could be the most enjoyable and relieving crime movie of 2024. When a retired Special Forces King is bullied by the local police to the point where he can't take it anymore. How does it end? Harry's riding with his headphones on. He doesn't seem to hear the sirens behind him. Next thing you know, he's being run right over. Cops say his bike was stolen. Then they ran Terry's ID and found no criminal record. The cops wouldn't stop there. They went through Terry's bag. They found $36,000. Money was for his brother's bail in court this afternoon. Police were instantly interested. So your cousin was charged with carrying contraband. Then we have reason to suspect that this money is drug money. That's why we're going to detain the money according to the law. If you want the money back, then we'll arrest you with a warrant. And we'll put you in a detention center. If you don't press charges, court will rule in our favor. Then we won't bother you again. Isn't that outright robbery? Terry had to give in. Because the most important thing for him, right now, was to get his cousin out on bail. And his cousin was a witness. If he was transferred to the state penitentiary, those whom he condemns will retaliate against him. When Terry arrived at the small town courthouse, staff told him that he couldn't make bail without the money. Terry explained that the money had been withheld by the police. And he took out a receipt. And the stamp on it was exactly the same as the one in this office. And the staff told him that bail is all about money. That's when he was approached by a nice lawyer named Summer. And when she found out what was going on, she said to Terry, the small town cops were exploiting a loophole in the justice system, and that they had a good chance of winning the case. The process would take about two years. Summer advised Terry to get his money back. Bail is the most important thing right now, because in three days, his cousin was going to state prison. Terry spent the evening sleeping by the river with no money. Although he has a strong temperament, he had to live with it. So Terry came to the police station at first light. He claimed he'd been robbed. It wasn't long before Steve, the cop from yesterday, came by, and the guy was still talking out of his ass. He said it was a felony to file a false police report. Director Byrne also came over at this time. Says they're already taking it easy on guys like Terry, who are suspected of dealing drugs. And if Terry ever bothered the officers again, they're gonna put Terry in jail. There's nothing good about this police department. Terry had no choice, so he said he only wanted $10,000 bail. The rest of the money is a gift to them, and he promised he'd never come back. Byrne's attitude changed immediately. He asked Terry to meet his cousin here Monday morning. And so Terry spent a few more nights in the wilderness. He arrived at the police station on Monday morning. And as soon as he saw Byrne, Byrne told Terry that his cousin had been picked up because Terry was three minutes late. Terry pedaled as fast as he could to catch up with his cousin and told him not to blow his cover in jail. But he'd get the money to get him out on bail as soon as possible. Little did he know that this conversation would be the end of the brothers. Then Terry called his former partner and borrowed $10,000. Not realizing that Byrne had already sent someone with a warrant, and seized his partner's restaurant, and took his safe deposit box. Turns out the reason Byrne pretended to say yes to Terry that day. He wanted to use the last few days to investigate him. Now Byrne seized his restaurant under the guise of searching for drugs. He couldn't figure out why he was being pushed to the brink, so he went to the police station alone. And that's when the encrypted file on Terry came in. Jessica, the policewoman, was shocked. Terry even has his own Wikipedia page. He was a jiu-jitsu instructor in the Marines. At this point, Byrne is confronting Terry. Steve warned Byrne to keep his distance from Terry. Byrne was about to draw his gun when Terry grabbed it and dismantled it. Terry then jumped on Steve and gave him a kill lock. Byrne actually had a hidden pistol. Terry snatched it away before he could fire it. What a bunch of rubbish. Terry took them down cleanly and entered the police station. First he forced Jessica to tie them up. Then Terry went to their vault. It's like a treasure trove for Somali pirates. Terry also saw enough guns to arm a hundred men, and he only got his money back. Terry got Jessica to put on a show for him, and then he got out of the precinct without incident. Then he went to the courthouse first to give the money to Summer, and the judge who received the money stamped it right away. He faxed the papers to the state penitentiary. Several police officers arrived at the courthouse just then. Without saying a word, they shot Terry with a stun gun. Terry resisted the pain of the shock. He eventually collapsed. Terry woke up and was taken to the hospital by Byrne himself. Because after yesterday, he knew that Terry was a tough guy. So they gave him all his money back and bought him a car. But in the end, Byrne also told Terry the devastating news. His cousin was stabbed to death the same day he was transported to the state penitentiary. Terry got angry and said he'd already warned Byrne. Byrne said this was no time to point fingers. Now you're faced with two choices. You can take the money and drive out of this town for good, or you fight us to the end. Then you're looking at 30 years in prison. By the time he saw his cousin, he was a cold corpse. Next day, a disillusioned Terry decided to leave town. And Summer, being a local, she told Terry about the corruption along the way. Summer studied law so she could protect her family. A police car behind them followed them all the way. They didn't turn around until they were gone. They're going to get back at Summer for helping Terry next. Summer woke up in the middle of the night and suddenly noticed something at her door. Then she found a syringe in her sink and needle marks on her arm. Eventually, the police told her that they were the ones who did it. Summer didn't know what to do. She had to turn to Terry. And Terry was very kind. He went back to the town to help Summer. 
Just as Terry got to the town, he ran into Steve on patrol. This time, both sides did not say anything. Steve shot Terry through the shoulder. Terry grabbed his stun gun and knocked him down immediately. When the other police saw this, they opened fire like crazy. I just got the new car. It was done like this. At night, he met up with Summer again. He decided to take down this nest of rotting bedbugs. Terry sneaks into the judge's home, then threatened and intimidated the old guy to hand over the criminal evidence from the police station. The judge still cherishes his life very much. Terry didn't have to do anything to get him to talk. Finally, he followed the clues and came to the basement of the court. Here are the police criminal records. Even the cause of death of Terry's cousin is included. Just as Terry was about to leave, Summer was caught. Seeing this, Terry stepped on the accelerator and hit the police car. He also took a corrupt cop hostage. That's when Byrne called. He agreed to a hostage exchange at a place called Rebel Ridge. Rebel Ridge was heavily guarded by the police early in the morning. Terry didn't show up at the appointed time. Byrne was able to locate him through his GPS. Turns out there's a police officer in the car who's being held hostage. Terry was driving a tow truck at the time. He's trying to destroy a nest of corrupt cops. When the cops arrived at the station, Terry just shot this guy. Unfortunately, he didn't kill him. It was a rubber bullet that hit the cop. By the time they got back, they had the station surrounded. Terry got more evidence. He turned himself in to the state police. Then he asked Jessica to help him buy some time. Jessica learned the whole story. She decided to stand up for justice this time. Jessica escorted Terry out of the building and tried to transfer him directly to the state police. And Steve, the man who killed his cousin, was adamant that he be shot on the spot. Steve was stopped by a cop who had never been involved in corruption. He told Steve not to forget his oath as a cop. Steve insisted he couldn't let Terry go. The situation became tense. Byrne stepped out, and that's when he knocked the vigilante to the ground. Terry took advantage of the situation, grabbed the cop and ran. The real hunter is fighting back. He emptied his shotgun, and then appeared unarmed in front of the cop to vent his anger through his fists. Terry never went for the kill, he just took down the rest of them and drove out of town. But his tires were blown out by the chasing cops. A large contingent of police from neighboring towns had caught up with him. Terry was surrounded. In the nick of time, the MVP of the race made her debut. Jessica accelerated and crashed Byrne's car. A couple of people were watching in disbelief. State police were called to the scene. Byrne's face was covered in blood, and he's going to be punished by the law. 